Hey everybody, how's it going? It's the Daily Shooter, and today we're going to be taking a look at what I would consider to be the best 1911 that you're going to find under $1,000. And yes, it's even available in California. This is the Rock Island Armory Rock Series EFS Cerakoted in Gunmetal Gray. So let's take a look at it. Okay, so here's a closer look at our Rock Island Armory 1911. Now, before we talk about some of the tech specs, details, and features, I just want to do a quick comparison between another pistol that's kind of in the same category, and it's definitely below that $1,000 price point, but gives you so much less than this pistol does. I wanted to be able to show it to you guys. So here we have our Rock Island, and I want to compare it to the Kimber Custom 2 1911. Now, my Kimber Custom 2, this has some slight modifications to it, nothing major, but a couple modifications that I felt were necessary just to get it up to the working standard that I wanted. Now the Kimber Custom 2, when you get it out of the box, it actually comes with plastic grips and that drove me nuts, especially for the price point. There's so many different great grip options out there uh, that you can get for a pretty good value these days. I don't understand why they shipped these with plastic grips. I had to change out the grips. With the Rock Island Armory, it comes standard, or at least this model, comes standard with G10 grips that have a really nice semi-aggressive texture on them. They're also flat so if you ever want to add a magwell it's going to match up really nice with the magwell but they're very nice grips these ones i had to buy new grips for because i just didn't like the plastic grips that it came with that didn't have a very nice texture on them another thing that kind of drove me nuts about the kimber custom 2 again keep in mind this is hundreds of dollars more is that this pistol came with a plastic mainspring housing I just don't understand. I mean, I guess Kimber's just trying to get away with, you know, making more money off just their name than an actual quality product. But this came with a plastic mainspring housing and the mainspring housing didn't have almost any texture on it at all. So I had to switch it out for a metal mainspring housing and that's why it came with this uh, Magwell adapter right here. But I had to switch that out and spend even more money to get that metal mainspring housing where the Rock Island Armory comes with a metal mainspring housing. I don't have to worry about switching this thing out and it does have some mild texture on it definitely better than what came on my Kimber. Another thing that you might notice here is that the Rock Island Armory also has ambidextrous controls. So if you're a lefty, that's going to be a pretty big deal to you. They both have skeletonized triggers, they both have skeletonized hammers, both have front and rear serrations and so forth. But a lot of the extra features like ambidextrous, G10 grips, metal mainspring housing and so forth just kind of blew this thing out of the water. I would choose the Rock Island Armory all day over this Kimber right here. As a matter of fact, the Rock Island Armory is even more reliable than my Kimber, and I have two Kimber Custom 2s, as a matter of fact, and this Rock Island Armory is more reliable than both of those. Another thing I want to point out here is that when you talk about the controls on the Rock Island Armory, these uh, this actually has extended controls. So you have an extended safety that reaches a little bit more forward, which is nice. You can kind of rest your thumb on that when you're shooting. And then we have our slide stop slide release that is extended more further back uh, which is nice because you know these have pretty wide grips and you know being able to take down the slide or at least drop the slide so forth with uh, your thumb without having to change your grip is a pretty nice feature you can see that on our Kimber Custom 2 here it has a standard release on it that doesn't come any further back and as a matter of fact is a little bit more hard to uh, actuate now, when you get your Rock Island Armory 1911, it's going to come in a nice hard plastic case. It's actually a pretty decent case, as a matter of fact. Uh, you can use this for standard range use if you want to. Most of these cases just find their way onto a shelf somehow for me, and I use some type of other bag. But if you're somebody who doesn't want to spend the extra money, you could use this hard case for both storage and taking with you to the range. We'll open this thing up so I can show you guys what comes in the box here. We have our 1911, which is going to be wrapped in plastic, and it's going to have some type of protective oil on it. 
take this thing out of the box. It does come with one eight round magazine, but the nice thing about 1911s is the magazines, they are affordable. You can find them just about anywhere. And this is actually a very nice and reliable magazine. So we got a nice eight round magazine right there. You have your uh, fired spent cases right here. There's two spent cases that they use to test this thing. And it's got your information on it. And then you're gonna have your uh, lock that's gonna be inside. This is all gonna be located behind the foam padding. And then you have your owner's manual right here. So you can see it says 1911 A1, A2 pistol. So it's gonna be for both models. And uh, it's got some pretty good diagrams how to fully take this thing down, all the parts and pieces and everything that you need. So it's actually a, a pretty good user's manual as well. Okay, so features and details. Now we went over a couple of them just in our comparison video, but still we'll talk about it here. We have those G10 grips with a nice semi-aggressive texture to them. We have ambidextrous controls. We also have the extended controls. We have a very nice skeletonized trigger. Uh, this trigger right here on mine pulls at five pounds. So it's got a good trigger in it. If you know 1911s, you know that 1911s tend to have probably some of the best triggers that you're gonna find on out of the box guns, period. I mean, I don't know another pistol that I have that comes out of the box with a trigger that's as nice as a 1911. So you get a really nice, uh, really nice trigger on that. You also get a skeletonized hammer. So it's a very nice skeletonized hammer and you get some of the sort of snag free sights. I would call them like combat style sights on this thing. Now the front sight, you can drift. Uh, you can also remove these. They're just uh, inserted with a dovetail. And then this thing is also Cerakoted in that gunmetal gray. Now, I know my camera can kind of change certain colors of things, so it looks probably a little bit more silver than it does gray, especially with the lighting. But I can tell you that it's a very nice gunmetal gray. This has a five inch barrel. We have uh, rear serrations. We have forward cocking serrations. Uh, a very, very nice beaver tail. This beaver tail right here is kind of offset in the color. That's another thing that I like too, because I mean, you know, looks do matter in a gun. I mean, that's why a lot of people don't buy high points, right? I mean, they're just these brick looking ugly things, so nobody buys them. This thing right here is a beautiful 1911. You can see that the uh, rear mainspring housing is gonna be black, so that offsets the gunmetal gray. We have the uh, beaver tail, which is also gonna be in black. This is a phosphate treatment that they use. Uh, we have our control which are also going to be in the black and then the barrel is also black as well so we have the black and the grays to offset the gunmetal and everything looks really nice together again this thing's chambered in 45 ACP now on top of the upgraded features there were a couple other things that really stood out to me about this 1911 right out of the box one of them is going to be this trigger now 1911s in general have nice triggers but this one kind of stood out to me it's a very clean trigger it's got a very nice trigger pull very consistent coming in between 4.8 to 5 pounds now that's just with a you know cheap basic trigger pull gauge but still it was pretty consistent every single time and the reset on this thing was almost non-existent now we'll go ahead and verify that this thing is unloaded so we'll take a look here there's no mag in the magwell we'll go ahead and check the chamber nothing in there again nothing in the magwell nothing in the chamber so this thing's safe to handle but i want to show you guys real quick the trigger pull here now this is a two-stage trigger so you can see that we have just a little bit of take up as we apply pressure to the trigger i'm going to say that it's anywhere between a quarter to a half pound of pressure that you need to apply so virtually nothing you go ahead and push on it just a little bit right there and you can see that we come up to this wall. Now the wall is very nice, very clean and there is no take up left after that. You know, unlike a Glock trigger or another, you know, semi-automatic uh, center fire pistol trigger where, you know, you'll put some pressure on that wall and there's still a little bit more creep. This one right here is just like a single stage trigger after that. It's just, that's it, it just breaks. So let me go ahead and show you that real quick here. Make sure I have enough pressure on this uh, rear safety right here, but go ahead and give that a pull. So very nice, very clean. And then I wanna show you guys the reset. The reset, like I said before, is almost non-existent. It's like a 32nd of an inch of travel, uh, maybe just a little bit more, but still almost no reset at all. So that's our reset right there. There was almost no movement. So very nice trigger. And on top of that, it's got a very smooth, very clean action. You know, 1911 actions, they can be gritty, they can be decent, or they can be very nice depending on what you're getting, how much money you're spending, and whether or not it's hand fit. This one right here has a very clean, very smooth action. And I was surprised because Cerakote usually adds a little bit uh, extra to the tolerance on the slide. So this thing already has really nice tight tolerances. But uh, you add that Cerakote and that Cerakote layer can kind of be a little bit thick versus let's say bluing or parkerizing, something like that. So I wasn't sure what to expect, but it is a very very nice, very smooth action, very clean running pistol. 
Now, I'll go ahead and I'll put an image up on the screen that comes directly from the ARMS Core website. It has all the tech specs and details on this thing. The font that they use is a little bit small. You guys can pause this if you'd like, and I'll, I'll read it to you if you can't read that small font. But uh, basically what it says, 45 ACP is the caliber. It comes with an eight-round magazine. The weight on this thing unloaded, according to ARMS Core, is going to be 2.5 pounds. Overall length is 8 point, uh, not 8 point, but 8 and 3 quarters inches. Overall width is going to be 1 and 5 sixteenths inch. Overall height is five and one half inches. The barrel length on this is five inches. Trigger pull, it says here, is going to be between four and six pounds. And with my trigger gauge, again, I was coming in between 4.8 and five pounds, so that seems about right. Uh, then we're looking at uh, the action. Again, it's going to be semi-automatic, recoil operated, number of grooves uh, in the barrel is going to be six. And then we have a right hand twist, which is one turn in 400 millimeters. Uh, I believe 400 millimeters works out to about 16 inches. So technically it's like, you know, one turn in 16 inches is what that kind of works out to be right there. We have six lines of grooves again. Uh, front sight and rear sight are both dovetail mounted, G10 grips, Cerakote in gunmetal gray, and the other parts that are black are Parkerized finish. So again, you guys can pause that if you want and check out the details and features on your own. But uh, again, this is a great pistol. It's very reliable. Uh, a matter of fact, it's more reliable than just about any other 1911 that I own. That's why I've been somewhat uh, over enthusiastic about this review. But it is definitely a great gun. It's very accurate. It's very easy to shoot and it comes with all the upgrades that you're going to want so you don't have to spend a bunch of extra money on other stuff. So it's definitely worth checking out and I love the fact that it is also available in California because again, being somebody who's originally from California, I know how hard it is to find certain pistols or find something that's nice or good that you know is on the California handgun roster. So I like the fact that this is on the roster and available for pretty much everybody to purchase. So uh, this is something worth checking out. I really want to say thank you to everybody for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. If you don't mind giving a thumbs up, that'd be great. And hitting that subscribe button as well, that helps the channel quite a bit. So anyway, I want to say thank you again to everybody and have a great day.